Two groups involved with the so-called Tumaini peace talks taking place in Kenya have warned that the discussions are at risk of collapse. The talks between the South Sudan government and the armed groups considered to be peace holdouts who have yet to sign the 2018 Revitalized Peace Agreement. Pagan Amon Okesh calls himself the leader of the Real Sudan People's Liberation Movement. He tells me that the government in Juba has taken three actions that, if not corrected, could doom the talks. South Sudan Information Minister Michael McQuee declined to comment, saying only that the government does not negotiate on social media. These are disastrous decisions that they have made. One is that they have enacted a law that violates the fundamental basic rights of the people of South Sudan. It is a law that they have used for many years to impose a dictatorship, a totalitarian regime in the country. And secondly, it is a law that is aimed at interfering in the political process in the country, uh, denying the political parties that political space necessary for them to interact with the people and also hold accountable the government. This is a draconian law that must be immediately thrown out. Let me ask you, they are the transitional government of national unity. Don't they have the right to make laws affecting the country? They have the right to make laws that are respecting the fundamental rights of the people. They have the right to make law to institute a rule of law, not to violate the principle of rule of law. That act is giving power to arrest citizens without warrant of arrest. This is a law that is being used to deny the people of South Sudan their freedoms of expression, their freedom of assembly, their freedom of movement, and their right to hold their government accountable to them. You talk about disastrous decisions that the parties have agreed to extend themselves in power for another 24 months. Yes, that is a disaster because that would mean extending the suffering of the people of South Sudan for another 24 months. But guess what? They said that they only accomplished 10% of the RRCs, of their agreement that they signed in six years. Meaning for them to implement the whole agreement, they would want to extend themselves in power for 60 years. This is the worst disaster in terms of probably the saddest news for our people. That's why every one of you were sent to Kenya to negotiate. Exactly. Yes. It seems to me you also have a problem with the National Elections Commission scheduling elections in South Sudan by the end of this year. What is your concern? You said this is in bad faith? Yes. We are here to negotiate a new agreement that will include a rescue plan to rescue South Sudan from the current situation, to rescue South Sudan and prevent it from collapsing into chaos and disorder and disintegration. That's why we are here. And that is why we are saying the government should negotiate in good faith. The government should not be taking decisions to take us back or to attempt to extend themselves in power or to try to violate the basic rights of our people on the elections. Even the parties to the agreement, the Artigono, have agreed that the elections in South Sudan will be held under a permanent democratic constitution, where power will be entrenched in the hands of our people to elect their government periodically in free and fair elections. They have also agreed that the elections will be conducted after uh, census have been made, after registration of voters have been made, after the demarcation of the constituencies have been made, and after the constitution has identified the political system in the country, which will also determine what type of a system we are going to have. All these prerequisites have not been met. How can you hold elections without a constitution? How can you hold elections when even the system of government is not agreed yet? This is an attempt to steal power 
to steal legitimacy from the people. Pagan Amon is the leading member of South Sudan's so-called peace holdout armed groups. A Ugandan military officer serving in Somalia was killed and six other soldiers were wounded when their convoy triggered a roadside bomb. Uganda's military said on Monday blaming fighters from the Islamist group Al-Shabaab. Uganda has about 5,000 troops serving in Somalia under the African Union Transition Mission in Somalia Peacekeeping Mission. Major Patrick Opio Awani was killed by the explosion in the village of Siliweligo, around 70 kilometers southwest of the capital Mogadishu on Sunday, said Ibrahim Kasule Sekito, a spokesman for the Uganda troops. Awani was commanding the convoy, which was heading from Mogadishu to Seljari in the lower Shabera region, Sekito told Routers. This attack won't deter us. It will instead stiffen our resolve to continue supporting peace efforts in Somalia, he said. Al-Shabaab has been fighting for more than a decade to topple Somalia's central government and install its rule based on its strict interpretation of Islamic Sharia law. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.